This segment of the Plastic Surgery Channel is brought to you by Galatea, now offering Galaform, the first 3D mesh for soft tissue support. Dr. Bill Adams here, and do we have a No Spin Live for you today. We're going to be talking about seven ways to avoid Botox and plastic surgery, but are they legit? Selfies in surgery and the vampire breast lift rears its ugly head again. So joining us are experts where you're going to learn the real deal about all these topics. We have Dr. Jason Posner from Boca Raton, Florida. We have Dr. Peter Fedor from Beverly Hills in Aspen, Colorado, and Rob Whitfield from Austin, Texas. All right, so I want, I want to ask you guys, Jason, I'm going to start with you. So this story was about seven ways to avoid, so seven ways to avoid Botox in surgery or plastic surgery. There's some really strange stuff in this article. So what do you think? I think the article should be changed to seven ways to waste your money on things that probably don't work. So a bunch of crap, you know, like put some sugar on your face and put this other crap on you. The only thing I liked was the pineapple juice because that probably may reduce a little bit of inflammation, at least you'll quench your thirst once in a while. But you no, know, these articles come out periodically in a bunch of the journals and then you'll find your patients coming in asking you about X, Y, or Z. And none of this replaces the things that we do in our office. You know, nothing replaces skincare, nothing replaces Botox or fillers right now. But you know what, if you want to play around with some of these things on your face, I didn't see one thing in this article that I thought would hurt you, other than maybe hurt your pocketbook a little bit. Well, I take, I take issue on that. I saw All right, one let's thing, Jason. I think, I don't remember, it's number seven or something to the end, is facial exercising. Uh, this, was, this was prevent <laughs> facial aging. And actually, actually, the more you know, you move your facial muscles and the more dynamic your faces are, forehead is a good example for that. The more you wrinkle your forehead, the more you raise your eyebrows, the more you're stretching the skin, and the more you're doing exactly what you set out not to do. Should I stop smiling then? <laughs> well, you have such nice teeth, Jason, that you should smile all the time. They had a, a little piece of tape called a frowny, and if you put the frowny on a wrinkle and slept on it, then the wrinkle would look a little better, they say. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, if you, you can't use heat or, or something to a degree like a filler or a toxin, we're not going to ever get the visual change that our patients want or we expect so none of these are are, are going to give them what they want all right so let's move on to the next the next one kind of fits into the same thing it's about how the selfie craze how that has uh, kind of spurned an increase in plastic surgery because people want to look better in their selfies i had a photographer in today who is a beautiful woman and uh she she photographs people for a living and and talks about how you know, she has to touch up photos and, and do things of that nature. And she doesn't like taking her own photos because she doesn't feel like she looks good. So we worked on some non-invasive treatments for her. So I, I don't see that, you know, I've definitely seen an you know, uptick in fillers and toxin use amongst younger women, younger males. Um, I don't know if I can correlate it to the self phase, but I think everybody's interested in looking better and taking care of themselves earlier in life. We've been looking at patients for years, right, that want to look better in photographs and other things, so that's nothing new. Well, I think it, to some degree, this is like, you know, if you're using a Snapchat filters, you definitely can make yourself look better. And this is like Photoshopping your own picture. And then how do we surgically do that? You know, maybe just some creams and perhaps like Bob Robert said, some some fillers or whatever. But the bottom line that there is, there is such, a, I mean, this is all social media and the social media at its extreme, especially with surgeons use Snapchatting in the operating room. And it reminds me of, you know, is that good, is that bad, where it popularizes maybe surgery to some extent, but where they're doing it for marketing purposes and going to a surgeon like that, in my mind is like taking a bus ride and when the bus driver in a very heavy traffic day is going to be texting while he's driving you in the bus. In other words, the surgeon's attention is focused not only on what he's doing or she's doing, 
surgically, but is focused on how to make the Snapchat as attractive to potential customers, if you wish patients, as possible. So I think it's a marketing tool in some practices and would worry me because I think patients do, they have the due diligence to find the best possible, the best in surgeons for, for the surgical you know, needs, as opposed to somebody who's, who's making a comedy out of the whole thing on a Snapchat. JP, what do you think? Okay, let's take this in a little, a little different direction. I have a little different view on this. The issue is nowadays, we all have our cell phones with us all the time. How many times 10 years ago did you carry a camera around? You know, you have a camera with us 24 seven now, everyone does. So I just think people are taking way more pictures of themselves and their friends than they ever did in the past. So they're looking at pictures of themselves and they're saying, oh, I don't like my face. I look fat, I don't like this. So I think, forget the selfie thing. I think there's just a ton more photos now. I mean, I spent some time with um, our 14 year old niece over Christmas time. Every five minutes, she was sending photos of herself doing nothing to her friends. Here, here's me playing with the dog. Here's me walking outside in Florida. So I think it's a whole different culture of sharing photos where people are concerned about what their photos look like. So on the bottom line, it's good for us because we yeah. have options to treat these patients. Yeah, no doubt. All right, well, I think those are some good insights. All right, so we're gonna wrap up with this. You know, we've talked about this before, this notion of uh, the vampire facelift. This article was entitled The Vampire Breastlift. This, you know, is some technique, really more of a marketing technique that some ER physician out in Hollywood, uh, so kind of near you, Peter, out there, came up with uh, to market to, to people. And um, it, you, know, you see articles about it, but this particular article talks about some girl that had PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma injected in her breast, and her breasts look incredibly better. And uh, it's just, um, it's just something that probably needs to be debunked, but I'm gonna get you guys' opinions. Jason, you lead us off. There are some things that I think might work with PRP. I think it helps with hair growth a little bit in some patients who are a little deficient. I think put on top of a laser resurfacing may play a role in fixing some of the skin repair. But injecting it into your breast, I think it's a lot of work for a little bit of gain and probably not worth it if it was my money to be spent. I'd rather tell these patients to go to the department store and buy some bags or shoes that will keep them happy for far longer. Maybe if you inject PRP in like an 18 year old girl's breast that doesn't need any breast lift, then, then it looks okay still, because it looked okay at the beginning. But come on, I mean, you know the deal. You see these women, people that really need a breast lift, are you gonna really be able to correct it with PRP? The problem is it may improve their skin a little bit. But again, I think it's not worth it. And the problem is you have articles like this and they bring patients in whose breasts are down to their knees and thinking that a little bit of PRP is gonna fix it. It's not gonna fix it. Can it give you a little bit of skin quality improvement? Maybe. Would I spend my money or my family's money on this? Zero. Absolutely not. People are confusing PRP with stem cells. And there's no question that PRP has some growth hormones, some, some fact, growth factors, it's platelets and this and that. And it has worked well for some orthopedic injuries. And any time that you have a catching word, and you know, I we can laugh at this, but I was born in Transylvania, so it occurred to me that maybe I should publicize <laughs> some kind of vampire approaches to plastic <laughs> surgery. But basically, you know, what it is, is a cocktail to the best of my understanding between PRP, fat injection, and some fillers like Juvederm and Valuma. And depending on how much you use and where you use, it could give a little bit of improvement. But what really turns me off the worst about this is that this is marketed in a form of almost like a patented procedure. You have to be trained by these people and there are warnings that if you're not one of their providers, then things may go really bad and stuff like that. And these providers have never done any real work on this. There's no scientific work to back it up. They never presented at meetings. They never have been published in the peer reviewed journals. So I think it's just like Fast and Furious, um, the movie series, was much more successful than it should have been, but the name is fantastic. Smart Lipo is much more successful than, than Laser Lipo should be, but the name is fantastic. And I think they're just exploiting a name. And same thing with Vampire Facelifts. Rob, what's your thoughts on this? It's crap. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's good marketing, no science, no data, minimal, minimal to no result. 
and waste of money. Those are some great insights, and I'm sure our viewers really uh, got a lot out of this session. So thank, thank you to our experts for you guys joining us. And if you want to see more of this, you can see it on the plasticsurgerychannel.com.